for me, so I will. He has done great things. He has done great things for me. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I told you it's power in praise. Daryl and Demond is out on the elevator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't tell me what praise and thanksgiving won't do. Come on, Sister Regina and Gladys. Come on, Shalom. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done great things. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done great things for me. Come on, here. Has he done great things for you? He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done great things. He has done great things for me. He has done great things. 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 He has done great things for me. 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 So I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. 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 Yeah. I wish y'all were here live. Come on. Come on. Oh, we are enjoying the presence of the living God. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done great things for me, so I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord in this building. We thank the Lord for Jesus. Go with me real quickly to scripture. We're here on this pre-Thanksgiving week. Thank you, worship and praise team, Sister Regina, Dr. Josh. God bless you, the music ministry, all of the musicians. We're delighted that you're here, City Cathedral. And I guess all of you, First Lady, we love you. God bless you, all of you. Uh, this is a wonderful time to be thankful. God just proved to us that he's a, uh, that he's a God that touched tangibles, even elevators. <laughs> so we thank God for Jesus. All right, place this reverie in your hand and give it a wave in the life of the Christian symphony and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. To, today I will be taught the word of the Lord. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive. I'm ready to hear. The incorruptible, irrefutable word of the living God. I will never be the same. Never, 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 never be the same in Jesus' name. Come on, give it a wave in the life of the Christian symphony. I know that we are moving quite quickly because we're trying to make up for all of these glitches. But God is yet on the throne. In the book of Mark, chapter 9, uh, verse 2. Let's start with verse 2 through 5. We'll skip down to verse 9 for sake of time. Look what it says verse 2. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. Don't try to elevate yourself. Allow the Lord to elevate you. And notice that he led them on an elevated place. 
there he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could ever bleach them. And there appeared before Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter, Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But look at verse 9. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. I like to use as clarion to this little piece tremendous thanksgiving. Come on, say it with me. Tremendous thanksgiving. Tremendous thanksgiving. What makes Thanksgiving so tremendous is that God is just worthy to be thanked. It's a, it's a, it's a tremendous rationale. It's a tremendous conclusion that we're going to give him not just Thanksgiving, but tremendous Thanksgiving. On onslaught, I, I, I want you to underscore the word thanksgiving in the Hebrewic tongue and there are many derivatives uh, Minister Gladys there are many de derivatives that deals with the word thanksgiving but the word thanksgiving in the Hebrewic terminology is toda toda say with me toda it is t-o-w-d-a-h it means to extend the hand or to open the hand now, practically speaking, when one opens hand, when one opens their hand, it is an indication that they are letting something go. It is ultimately impossible, beloved, even beyond wishful thinking, to want to let something go, and yet you're clutched, you're clenched to it. In order to let it go, you have to open your hand. Well, Thanksgiving only deals with the extending of hand or the extension of hand or extending your hand. But also while you are extending your hand, you're opening your hand. You're letting it go. What does it mean? The Thanksgiving is when we let it all go in terms of our reasoning to give him Thanksgiving outside of biblical truth. Anything that is outside of biblical truth that does not match the will of the Lord, you have to let that go because otherwise your thanksgiving will be short-lived because you're going to attach conditions to it. And anytime you attach prerequisites um, for your motivation of giving Jesus thanks or giving him thanks or giving him praise or perpetual praise outside of God's will or theological truth, then your thanksgiving will always be short-lived. It will not be perpetual. And the support of scriptures behind our giving him this type of practice of thanksgiving or this habitual thanksgiving is really taken from various verses. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, the church of Thessalonica was a very unique church because this church was reeking with opulence and royalty and wealth. One of the richest churches with, 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 within the church of which um, Paul, uh, the apostle, set up amongst many. This, this particular church uh, had no problem with paying tithes and offerings and all of that because the church of Thessalonica was not only powerful Politically, but they were powerful in terms of economic and trade market. They were known all over the region. Everything was going well in their lives. So then, why would the Lord, or why would Paul, emphasize and encourage the church of Thessalonica to give him thanks in all circumstances? Because when everything is going well in your life and there's nothing really competing um, with your abundance, 
there's nothing you know competing with your prosperity sometimes it becomes very competitive and very hard to stay in um, a praise posture because everything is going well and so he reminded them he says even though everything is going well does not exempt us or you the church of Thessalonica to give him this perpetual praise outside of prerequisites or conditions. And so Paul pins the writing and he emphasizes, beloved, that he says, church, even though everything is going well, in terms of your desired place, you still have to give him praise and thanksgiving in all circumstances, in all circumstances, not for all circumstances but in all circumstances to give him thanksgiving, which is the will of the Lord. It is the will of the Lord that we give him thanksgiving in all circumstances. Not because the circumstances and the situations are in concert with our comfortable place. That's not God's will. The will of the Lord for us to give him perpetual thanksgiving, beloved, is when we don't attach circumstances that are in unison with our desired place in order to give him thanksgiving. Are y'all getting this? Otherwise, your thanksgiving, beloved, will, will be short-lived. And so I'm only talking to the mature ones, those who have an established relationship with the Father. When you are in relationship with the Father, beloved, your thanksgiving will never be short-lived because your thanksgiving is not predicated on circumstances or situations. It ain't predicated on feel good. It ain't predicated on feelings. It's predicated on the fact that it is the will of the Lord that we give thanksgiving. You can't say that you are in relationship with him and, and not be willing to give him perpetual thanksgiving in spite of what, even if the enemy is trying to attack your life, you still have to give him this perpetual thanksgiving. It ain't about turkey, it ain't about mistletoe, it ain't about cranberry juice and cranberry sauce and, and dressing and all of that is good. I like a good sweet potato pie and a pecan pie. I, I love that and, uh, and, and, and peach cobbler. All of that is very important. Uh, but that's not predicated on Thanksgiving. Um, I'm giving him Thanksgiving because I'm letting everything go outside of, of the reasoning to give him Thanksgiving that does not match biblical truth. I'm letting that go because it is the will of the Lord. You see, God will only support anything and everything and all things that are in concert with his will. He becomes a partner of your reasoning to give him thanksgiving. So there are three points that I want to rest my hand with that I believe is going to bless your life. Number one, I want to deal with the practice. Number two, I want to deal with the perpetuation. And then number three, I want to deal with the pleasure. There are three things that will help us to give this tremendous thanksgiving. I know that we'll go back on the series next week on Take and Bake, but listen, I want to emphasize one of the ways of giving him tremendous thanksgiving, beloved, is when you embrace the need to practice. Number two, the need to perpetuate. And number three, the need to find pleasure. We're practicing because the thing that you practice, you will perfect, we talked about. And the thing that you practice in terms of perfection, you will become good at. The thing that you practice, you would always create, beloved. If, if you keep on doing a certain thing, you will become um, proficient in it. Where which thanksgiving would be like a knee-jerk reaction. It would be part of your theological behavior. Yeah, the Lord wants you to, to practice thanksgiving by opening your hand and, and extending your hand and moving your mouth by letting every rationale, every reasoning for your giving him thanksgiving, you have to let that go if it does not match the will of the Lord. 
That's a few scriptures real quickly. In the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, Whatever you do, whether in the word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father. He says, whatever you do, make sure that you are giving Jesus thanksgiving. Chapter 4, verse 2, the same book of Colossians, it says, commit yourself with it. Devote yourself in prayer, be watchful with thanksgiving, an alert in mind, be vigilant, and a thankful heart is as a result of practice. See, make sure that part of your lifestyle, your theological lifestyle, that is caucated with thanksgiving, beloved. So the practice is really induced, not necessarily that circumstances that are going in your desired place, but my thanksgiving is really induced, watch this, because of the sovereignty and the absoluteism of God's goodness. I'm practicing thanksgiving and my thanksgiving is being practiced because it's really induced in the goodness of God. All right? In the book of Psalm chapter 119, verse 68, it declares, You are good, and what you do is good. You are good, and, and not only you are good, but what you do is good too. And then he says, teach me. What does it mean? This declaration does not come because you are getting the results you want from a theological place, but God is good because of the knowingness of his goodness. Otherwise, the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28 would sound like a contradiction, beloved. Y'all know the scripture. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28 it says, and we know that all things works out for our good for those who love him and called according to his purpose. And in verse 29, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Although we experience circumstances that are not good in themselves that compete with our giving him perpetual thanksgiving, but we must know the Lord skillfully weaves, watch this, those dark threads of life together as a glorious tapestry for our good. In other words, even situations that does not feel good, the Lord says that he will weave certain things as a glorious tapestry. In other words, God becomes our tailor-made clothing heir. While we are going through these uncomfortable situations, the Lord will still work it out for your good. So our gratitude is really not based upon good circumstances, but our confidence and trust in the goodness of God. Whether it calls by spiritual rebellion, watch this, or ridiculous situations, it's all for the glory of God. So, you then must conclude that all things are working for our good for them that love the Lord, that are called to his purpose. Ultimately, it is for his glory, beloved. Isn't it something how the Lord can work together what does not feel good, what may not necessarily be good, but he, he works all of those things for our good, for them that love the Lord. If you love him, he's going to work it out. And it's going to always line up accordingly to your purpose that is in Christ Jesus. But ultimately, it is for his glory. The image is the glory of God. It is always for his glory, dear beloved. All right, I want you to underscore real quickly the word glory because the word glory uh, really have two words. The first word is Shekinah glory. Say it with me, Shekinah glory. Shekinah simply means the full disclosure of his power, presence, love, holiness couched in one 
so there will be no misunderstoods of his presence. Because if you don't understand that the presence of God will always represent the love of God, the holiness of God, and the presence or the, 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 the full manifestation of God, then you will equate the presence for being something else. The glory of God is only necessary to reveal the awesomeness of his love, presence, holiness couched in one. But there's another incredible word for the word glory. It is kabod. It is K-A-B-O-W-D. It means rare and to be seldom. Okay, the reason why the glory is sometimes rare and seldom, because we are relying on others to be a substitute or a replacement to experience the glory for ourselves. The glory should be frequent, but as long as we are relying on others to be a replacement and a substitute to experience the glory for ourselves, then that full disclosure of the revelation of who God is will sometimes be delayed or blocked because we're waiting on the praise team, we're waiting on the praise leader, we're waiting on the preacher, we're waiting on others that are sitting beside us to praise them as a substitute for ourselves. And as a result, the glory won't be revealed to you, but rather to others. Why? Because as long as we are comfortable with complacency, we will always permit others to suppress what should be ushered in, beloved. The glory of God is really the full disclosure of his presence, his love, and his holiness. Now, the companion scripture goes back to the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 29. And we know that all things are working together for our good, and it's all for the glory of God. God is going to reveal himself in a bad situation, and he's going to turn it around and reverse it for your good. But it is contingent that you can see good in a bad situation. Listen, the Lord will, look, reveal good in a bad situation before, you, before he brings you out of it. Are y'all getting this? So all things work together for the good. As long as you stay in love with him, as long as you stay in his presence, even in an uncomfortable situation, the Lord will work it out for your good, beloved. So don't discount what you're going through that feels bad. The Lord will work out what you are going through that feels bad for your good so that you can give him some glory. Not that you uh, pop your collar or act super pseudo sanctified. No. The Lord will work it out that feels bad for your good so that you can see the glory of the Lord in it before he finally brings you out. I hope that you're getting this. Number two, the perpetuation of thanksgiving is that the Lord requires, a, um, beloved, for us to give him this perpetual praise. We have to give him this perpetual praise. Now, the perpetuation of thanksgiving is always influenced by thinkgiving. I know that's, uh, that's poor grammar, but it'll make sense by the time we finish it. In order for us to really perpetuate our thanksgiving, we must be thanksgiving. You cannot have a thanksgiving or to give him thanksgiving unless you first give him thanksgiving because your thinking will always precede your thanking. Uh-huh. You see, your thanking him will never come before your thinking about it. Maybe you are not conscious of it, but my thinking uh, is a prerequisite to my thinking, especially if I am to perpetuate my thanking him. The only way that I can perpetuate my thanksgiving is when I think about the goodness of God all the time, his love, his unconditional love, and his sovereignty, and the absolutism of God, it's going to induce my thanking him, beloved. So my thanksgiving is really an extension of my thanksgiving. It's when I thank you, it's, it, it's because I thought about 
the significance of the gift. When someone gives you something, and they're going to do it during Thanksgiving and during the holiday season, it should always um, motivate you to evaluate the significance of the gift, not necessarily the cost of the gift. And that's important, too. But the significance that when someone takes the time to give you something that you are not expecting, that they had you in mind, and they gave you something, and the mature response from the Josh should always be, thank you. If someone cash pay you, if someone give you a nice card, and maybe they didn't put anything in it, but those are beautiful words, because words will always determine how you feel and what you do. It determines your action. And sometimes you just need one word that can catapult you to the next level. So they give you a Hallmark card. Didn't put anything in it. You didn't open the card and shake it. You know, you really read the card and they wrote something in it. Maybe it was a short liner. But it was a wonderful thought. And you evaluated the significance of the gift and you begin to think about the words and think about what that person went through in order to give you a gift and automatically the first thing you said Lord thank you and thank you and then you told the person thank you never receive a gift from somebody and you don't say thank you I think that's rude I think it's immature you got to remind children to do that aren't you gonna say thank you but he that is mature I don't care if you weren't taught to say thank you. I'm teaching you now. I don't care if a person give you a small gift that you know it came from the dollar store. It's a gift. It's more than what you have. Something that does not necessarily match your style. Just the fact that they would do that. Somebody gave me a tie, a necktie, and it was like, a, it was like the American flag on it. And they had flowers mixed with it. Now, I don't, I don't wear it, but, but it was a beautiful gift, and they did it out of their heart. Not to be sarcastic, I still have the tie. And I said, thank you, and I really meant it. Now, you know I ain't going to put it on, because it doesn't match me. But even when a person gives you a gift that does not match you, that doesn't mean that you don't thank them, because let me tell you something, your, your, your thanksgiving um, will influence your environment, beloved. And let me tell you something. It will always eliminate the spirit of ungratefulness. And see, that's what happened to our forefathers, Adam and, and Eve. Adam and Eve was blessed with an abundance, a great environment. God gave them fruit trees. I'm just going to mix my little take it in. I mean, apple trees and, 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 and pears and orange trees and had them they had fruit trees but they were not necessarily satisfied with all of the abundance of the fruit trees and they went after the one tree that God told them not to do he says don't do, don't touch the tree of knowledge the day that that you touch it you shall surely die and your eyes will be open to see the opposite because anytime you exercise a spirit of ungratefulness then thanksgiving will always be short-lived. They were not satisfied with the abundance of what the Lord blessed them with. They spend more time of what they did not have. So they downsize what the Lord blessed them with as not enough. And ungratefulness was apparent. What I have downsized as not enough could very well be an upgrade to somebody else, beloved. So they ate from the tree of knowledge, wanting to be like God. But the fact of the matter is, they were always like God. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be like God as long as you deal with the right method of trying to be like God. The motive of wanting to be like God was genuine, but it was the method they used to pull it off that jacked everything up. And any time you listen to the voice of the devil for your method 
of getting what you want, it would always be anti-God's will because what you want may not necessarily match with God's will. So this perpetual thanksgiving is not only influenced by think giving, but it's also influenced by tenacity. Look what it says in the book of Psalms. Y'all know where I'm going. Chapter 34, verse 1, it says, And I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. There's about four or five wills within that I will bless the Lord. That's tenacity. That's having uh, a determined spirit that your will supersede your reason to give him praise. In spite of, of the circumstances that was not in unison with your desire to do it, you just have to will, a strong will, that I'm going to bless him anyhow. So the Bible does not give a full disclosure why David blessed the Lord. Perhaps he was going through situations, oppression, suppression, all kinds of upheavals in life. We know the place that he was at did not line up with his desired place. He was in a place of a doulum. He was running for his life from an angry king, and yet he penned the writing that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Have you ever felt the need to praise him and yet your situation didn't match your reason to praise him and yet you pulled out from the liturgical lungs, the recesses of your spirit to bless the Lord anyhow, to speak well of him, even when what you were going through did not match your reason to do it. And in one choice and in one decision, you made a decision to bless the Lord anyhow. Can I tell you that the Lord is requiring us to give him this perpetual praise or perpetual thanksgiving, not because he needs it, but because our promotion depends on it. The scripture says that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And the companion scripture to this is when praises go up, blessings will come down, child of God. So the perpetuation of thanksgiving is really influenced with our thinking about him and our being tenacious. There has to be tenacity in our willingness to give him praise regardless of, of the resistance and interferences, things that are trying to impact our willingness to praise him. Sometimes you just got to go in the recesses of I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Thirdly, the pleasure of thanking him is really found, as we read in our background scripture, in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Specifically in verse 2, here it is in context. Jesus led Peter, James, and John to a high mountain. There he was, Jesus was, they weren't, but Jesus was transfigured or transformed. And in verse 3 and 4, it describes the transformation or the transfiguration of Jesus. Describes, Paul describes it as his clothes became dazzling white. His face was glorious, like unto the sun. And in verse 4, there appeared before them, Elijah and Moses, who were talking, having a conversation, a fresh conversation with Jesus. And in verse 5, these were the lips of Peter. Peter said, Rabbi, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us build for you a tabernacle, a tent for Elijah, Moses, and yourself. In verse 5, in translation, 
when Peter says, Master, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us build three shelters, one for you, Elijah, and Moses. In translation, he was appreciative. Peter says, I find so much pleasure in being in your presence that I'm grateful. It was Peter that said, Master, it's good for us to be here. In translation, thanks for having us. Thanks for putting us in your presence and then giving us a revelation. All three was, were in his presence, but only one said, thank you. Isn't it something how so many people God um, has blessed and sometimes their thanksgiving and praise become overlooked or short-lived? How can you not be in the presence of God and not be thankful? Peter was not thanking God because Jesus blessed him with a Lamborghini. <laughs> Peter was grateful because he was in his presence and he spoke up because when you get a revelation out of being in God's presence, it will move you and motivate you to give him Thanksgiving, not from a place because you've just received a tangible gift from Jesus Christ, and that's good. It superseded that. Peter says, I'm thankful because I'm just in your presence, and you can't be in God's presence, and then God doesn't show you something. Don't allow your familiarity with God become commonplace to not give him praise for just being in his presence. I just believe James and John became so common with Jesus until even when Jesus showed them some dazzling things, because they were so common with Jesus, they didn't give him perpetual praise of just Jesus showing them something that was not necessarily privy to others. Don't get so comfortable with people that are in your life and they become nice, they do sweet things to you, and then you just take it for granted as if they're supposed to do it. I wish I had somebody here. Peter stood up, and sometimes you got to do it all by yourself and say, you know what, I'm, if don't nobody else give him praise, I'm going to stand up and say, Lord, if you don't bless me another season, I thank you because I sense your praise. I thank you because it is your presence that represents the anointing of God that gets us our blessings. I thank you for blessing me because if you are not with me, I can not only be blessed, or keep the blessing, I won't be blessed. So I thank you for your presence. Whatever you do, I believe Peter felt that in his spirit, if you would allow me to translate it. I believe that Peter was so grateful. He says that whatever you do, don't take away your presence from me. If, if Jesus doesn't bless you another time, just being in his presence should be enough. So Peter says, Master, it's good for us to be here. Uh, it's, it's good. Let us make three shelters, one for you, Elijah, and Moses. Now, this was a desire to preserve the presence of God. Peter was saying this glory is so spectacular, it's so dazzling, let's build something to keep it. Are y'all getting this? Jesus' presence, the glory of God ought to be so spectacular and so glorious and so dazzling until in our mind ought to have a shelter to preserve his presence in as much as you will not allow others to pull you out of the glory of God. Sometimes you got to build a shelter in your spirit. Sometimes you got to build a shelter in your psychology to preserve the glory of God. What you are willing to give up Nurture and embrace, reject in order to preserve the glory is your challenge. And sometimes you got to be willing to give up some stuff. Sometimes you got to be willing to reject some stuff in order to preserve like Peter was willing to build three shelters. One for Jesus, Elijah, and Moses. 
How much are you willing to give up some stuff in order to preserve the presence of God? I found out that in his presence is the fullness of joy. So Peter's thanksgiving was not induced because of monetary gift, but his own evaluation of the presence of God and how rare and seldom that was. So when I think about the goodness of God, when I think about who I used to be and how I was disconnected, and yet the Lord reached down, looked beyond my sins and blessed me anyhow, I can't help but to give him praise. And sometime from that place, that ought to be your preservation as likened to building three shelters. Are y'all getting this here? So Peter says that I am grateful that you have downloaded revelation to me and to us to know that in spite of what I'm going through, that you have revealed yourself. Hallelujah. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful because you saved me from a fishing business. I'm grateful because I remember uh, that when I spoke too soon at the Lord's table and yet you rebuked me, hallelujah, and called me Satan, get thee behind me, and yet you still received me. I'm grateful. I give you praise. Uh, make sure, uh, Jesus says, that you tell no one what you just saw. There are certain things that the Lord has revealed to you that you are not permitted to share with others. It's not because uh, you're being uh, pompous. No, it's because people that you feel can handle the revelation that the Lord revealed to you really can't handle it. Hallelujah. And so that's why you got to pray before you share all of your testimonials, before you share all of your prophetic blessings, before you share all of your divine revelations. He says, make sure that you tell no one uh, until it's soon, until it's necessary. God sometimes would not permit you to share what he has revealed to you, not because he don't never want you to tell it, but until it's the season to share it. Sometimes you're sharing your next move too soon to the right person. I wish I had somebody. It could be the right person if the Lord wants you to share, but not right now. Y'all still didn't get it. The Lord wants you to share what he's about to reveal to you to the right person, but not right now. Hallelujah. And can I put a pin here? Sometimes we can't see what the Lord wants to reveal to us because we've not elevated our place where which the Lord has led us to be. The Lord led Peter, James, and John to a high mountain to reveal himself. There are certain places uh, that you can't see God as long as you stay low. Uh, God is about to elevate you, not because he wants you to look pseudo-sanctified, but because he wants you to see what is necessary not revealed to others. And so you got to elevate your mindset. I want you to look at your neighbor next door and touch yourself and say self is about to be elevated. God is about to elevate your life so that he can show you some things where which others can't see. So I want you to find pleasure in your giving him thanksgiving, not because of presents like gifts, but because of the presence of God. I'm going to give him thanksgiving, and I'm going to find pleasure in it because the presence of God supersedes the present. Hallelujah. See, the world wants us to believe that what qualifies us to give thanksgiving from a pleasurable place is because the Lord has blessed us with something new. No. The Lord's presence represents his nature. The Lord will never show up and his nature comes next. <laughs> God's nature bespeaks his presence. And the presence of God, as I taught you earlier, represents his glory, which is his holiness, which is his nature. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I'm giving you this pleasurable thanksgiving because of your presence, because of your nature. The nature of God is really explained and defined in his word. I'm giving you thanksgiving because of your word. 
I find pleasure because of your holiness. I find pleasure because of your presence. So I'm going to give him thanksgiving. I want you right now as I stand, I want you right now as I stand to give him a thanksgiving of pleasure. Are y'all listening to me? Are y'all listening to me? I want you to find pleasure in giving him this perpetual thanksgiving. It deals with the practice, it deals with the perpetuation, and it deals with the pleasure. It, it's, it's induced with the knowingness of the nature of God. The nature of God is, he didn't bring me this far to leave me. The nature of God is, though it feels like abandonment, the Lord will never leave me nor forsake me. So I'm a go, uh, listen, I'm going to find pleasure of just being in his presence. Let that be enough to motivate you to give thanksgiving. I'm going to think about the goodness of the Lord. And when I think about the goodness of God, the knowingness of his goodness, it's going to always induce thanksgiving. So elevate your mind. Let the Lord lead you to the mountain so that he can show you some things so that you can give him, it's good to be up in here. So I release an anointing of Peter's spirit in your spirit that it's just good to be in your presence, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for showing me some things. Thank you for revealing. God, I want to bring you out in order to reveal some things. God's going to reveal some things while you are yet in. What a privilege to know the King of kings and the Lord of lords. What a privilege to be in his presence, beloved. So in this pre-Thanksgiving, traditionally, we really have a present Thanksgiving every day of our lives. So lift those hands, child of God, right where you are. My time is way up. I want you to go out in knowing that it is the will of the Lord that we give him thanks in all circumstances and in all situations. In all situations. The Lord wants you to give him this. Now listen, go to the phone real quickly. I want you to dial the number that's on the screen. Our time is for a spin. It's 713-659-7750. Our Woodlands location is 281-292-5402. Sugarland is 281-498-7722. Dial those numbers and make a blessing, a financial blessing contribution to our ministry, the citycathedral.com. It's a safe site. Go to it and be a financial blessing to this ministry, beloved. We do what we do because we're people of praise, we're kingdom-minded people, but yet it takes finances to promote the kingdom of God. Ain't nothing free. Anything that is free is suspect. Talking about, you know, somebody called me the other day and said, um, you, have, you have qualified for a grant for $9,000. I say, send it to me and then call me back. I mean, ain't no need to be talking. Let me just give you the address. Mail it to me. And then we'll, we'll talk later. Yeah, they hung up. Because ain't nothing, for, ain't nothing for free, beloved. Salvation ain't free. It was paid. Jesus gave his life so that we can have this perpetual salvation, this universal redemption. He redeemed all men once and for all. Hallelujah. So let's just give him praise and thanksgiving. Let's help us. Let's finance the kingdom with your tithe and offerings. Be a blessing to City Cathedral. I know we're piping in word and worship to you. And we're teaching you how to be a witness here on earth. Would you sow a seed right now? Those of you who want to bless me, I want you to do that. Cash pay me. That's LeroyWooder.com. Not LJ Wooder because that's my son. And he ain't going to give me my money. It's LeroyWooder.com. Leroy Wooder uh, cash pay, right? Leroy Wooder cash pay. Com. Lord help. All right? So be a blessing to me in whatever size. 
I'm so grateful. I'm grateful. So be a blessing. All right, those of you who want to mail your contribution, it's Post Office Box 88001. Post Office Box 88001, Houston, Texas, 77288. Now, I'm standing now. I'm going to sit back down next Sunday. I told you I ain't going to be standing preaching until I get in my building, until we meet in the physical so I can walk around and do what I do. Okay? Now, listen. All right. It's Post Office Box 88001, Houston, Texas, 77288. Mail your donation. It's City Cathedral, City Cathedral, make a blessing. Those of you who are not saved, I pray for salvation to touch you. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me, reign and rule in the name of Jesus. Thank you for saving me. And according to your word, to as many as received him, to them he gave power to become sons of God. Thank you for welcoming me in the family, in the kingdom family. You said that if I will confess with my mouth and believe in my heart the Lord Jesus God raised from the dead, the resurrection power, that blessed hope, thou shalt be saved. So I do believe that scripture. Thank you for saving me. It ain't based on feelings. It's based on facts. It's based on the truth. That if thou would confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. So in Jesus' name, thank you for saving me. Now listen, go to the prayer line. Dial the number that's on the screen. That's area code 605-313-5107. Access code 164419-POUND. It's on the screen. There are prayer partners standing by. Our president of our prayer ministry, Minister Hatter. Our Woodlands director, uh, Minister Singlefield, God bless you, Sister Singlefield and others, all of those prayer partners, Minister Richardson, all of them of Sugar Land. Y'all call them, those other prayer team members, our ministers and elders and lay people. Thank you for always chiming on. There's so many of you that I can't call your names, but I know who you are. Thank you. Call the number that's on the screen right now, the prayer line number. And make a blessing. Come on. And let somebody stand in the gap. The spirit of intercession has blessed our ministry, the gift of praying. Call right now. Let us pray. In fact, you can call every day at 7 a.m., 12 p.m., and 7 p.m. You can call every day at 7 a.m., uh, 12 p.m., and 7 p.m. And somebody live on our prayer line. We'll pray the scripture on your behalf and touch and agree. All right, until next time, I want you to be encouraged now and let the Lord go before you and release choice blessings on your behalf. Now, listen, right before they turn me off, be very safe and be praying for us. We'll be feeding thousands of people on this coming Thanksgiving day. Be praying for us at the George R. Brown. We're supporting the Citywide Club and many other organizations there. Thousands of people will gather to drive up and to walk up. We will not have the tradition of dying in because of this pandemic. Pray for us, those that are volunteering. I encourage you to come to volunteer. Please be safe. Y'all heard what the news media said and the medical team, the specialists and scientists. They says, listen, don't have all them people over to your home and all of that. Be very selective. All right, those of whom that you invite, uh, do the temperature check. Uh, require them to wear the mask. Practice social distancing and all of that. And then use technology to Zoom. Say hello to Grandma Nim and Mama Nim and all of that. But you be safe and be wise, be prudent, be patient, and be prayerful. God will eventually get us out of this. But until then, we got to practice social distancing. And listen, we're going to probably hang around with this situation for a minute. But be patient now. Be patient. 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 But listen, happy Thanksgiving to you. May you enjoy your family. May you make some calls and all of that. But stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. And we're going to get through this eventually. Stay in contact with us now. I want to hear from you, City Cathedral family. I love you, all of our guests and visitors. Thank you for chiming on. Come on, worship and praise team. Oh, uh, God has so, hallelujah. God has so yes, many great things in store for me. Can't you see? Many great Sing it again, sing. God has so 